My name is Jose Romero. I was born in Honduras in 1976, immigrated to the United States in 1986 at the age of 10 to a predominantly African-American community in uh, uh, the upstate of New Jersey. From there, we moved to upstate New York where I went to middle school and high school, formed most of my close relationships with people, and then from there I moved down to New York City to go study architecture at the Pratt Institute where I had the honor of studying abroad in Rome and studying both art and architecture there. That's what sort of what got me going in art and got me going in painting and in 1999 I started painting down in New York City and had my first show in 2005. I worked for various firms for about eight and a half years in New York and um, then moved, started a small family and moved down to South Carolina in 2009. Um, my style is directly related to Jean-Michel Basquiat who's an artist from the early 80s in New York City. He's a neo-expressionist. Um, mine is more of an abstract expressionist and now it's morphed into more of a conceptual expressionist. Conceptual um, abstract expressionist. I draft for a living. I use dotted lines. I use dashed lines. So it's incorporated into my work that way. That's why I always emphasize that my background in architecture and the people I've met through uh, working for exhibit design and architecture firms have really formed into my work. I think that my work should be out there. That's why I price it accordingly. I want it to be affordable. I want people to have it. I want it to be in their homes. I want them to enjoy it. I think that it should be for the people. I'm not looking to get rich from this. I'm looking to get work out there. I produce so much that it, I produce these days, I'm, I'm only working four days a week for my job. So I have three day weekends and I can produce two paintings a weekend. Well, this piece was initially started in 2016. It was called Stretch. It has four arms going out towards the corners of the piece. And it was taken from a form that a friend did from Norway, an, an exchange student from Norway did while we were in architecture school. He designed a pier that was sort of stretching out. I said, you know, I really like that. And I'd like to incorporate it into my work. Well, I wasn't happy with the end result then. So I started the rework series, which I said, you know, in which I said, you know, I'm going to rework certain pieces that I previously didn't like. I just don't want to discard them. I think that they deserve a second chance. So I went over it with gesso, then went over it with a palette knife, picking different colors and saved one aspect of the previous painting and added to it and then added the fire. What it represents is our, when we're stuck within society, in the net of society, trying to get out. Early on, I was sort of suffering from PTSD, I still am, but I witnessed 9-11 and suffered from PTSD and that sort of affected me in a way where I became what my doctor would call a wuss per se. I would just, I was cocooned. I didn't, I didn't want to speak out. I didn't want to break through. I, I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to like speak back at people. And then one day I finally did. And this lady at work said, you know, that's a breakthrough for you, man. And that's where this piece comes from. And that's me screaming and finally letting loose and getting out and becoming more assertive. This piece here directly relates to Jean-Michel Basquiat. Um, it is about his life and how he befriended Andy Warhol, who is another artist from the, 19th, the 20th century, who is uh, very important in the course of art history. Um, they befriended each other in New York City and became best friends, but the media didn't see it that way. Andy Warhol had a reputation for 
taking advantage of people and using them. And um, so the media sort of regurgitated that. They, they said that Basquiat was Andy Warhol's uh, pet, or he was using him. Um, well, Basquiat responded to that by getting away from Andy Warhol, not taking his calls anymore, not going out with him anymore. And um, they, while Andy Warhol still wanted to be friends and still called them, they, the, the friendship dissipated. Well, Andy Warhol had an operation done in which he didn't come out of, he didn't survive, he died. And this was sort of Basquiat's last punch or Andy Warhol's last punch towards Basquiat in his life because from Basquiat couldn't forgive himself for distancing him, himself away from Warhol and um, went into a depression and started doing drugs and eventually overdosed and died. Now, this comes from the, a show that they did together in which they collaborated on pieces and they both wore gloves. So they were sort of going at each other. So, and it's, it's, it's also, pointed at his heart. It represents his heart. This piece comes from my background. Uh, I am part Indian, part Spaniard, or a mestizo from Central America. Uh, it sort of regurgitates my Indian background, and it talks about how uh, one goes out and puts food on the table. Hunter, you're out there hunting to put food on the table for your family, providing 